We're here to talk tech, and I don't know shit about my own computer. That's hilarious. <laughs> Day drinker. Mm. I like to do these every time I have a daytime podcast. It's just smart. Oh, yeah. And they're delicious, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to be so. my first time having one. So oh, really? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. We got Earl and Eric. Two E's. Oh, that is great. It is great. Wow. Yeah. Day drinker by Lost Forty. That's that's nice. I love it. Let me see. Uh, see, I'm so I'm so. Like, I'm not a beer here. drinker, so I'm just always impressed when any beer tastes good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even as a beer drinker, me too, because a lot of them don't. Yeah. That's why I'm such a huge fan of this company because I, I don't think I've found one yet that I'm just like, Ugh. minus the ones like the styles I just don't drink. Yeah. 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 I think. I think they have like a sour one that came out not too long ago, I believe, and it was all right. I'm not that much. Of I don't know. They just did fan. a Paul Bearer one called Legend or something like that. Oh, that's awesome. haven't had that yet. I don't even know if it's for sale yet, but I know they got the. I follow them on the Instagram, so <laughs> on the Instagrams, on the grams. So today we're talking tech, technology. Beep, We've been doing beep, a lot beep. of music on here and stuff, and I wanted to talk about some other things. And me and Eric broke the cardinal rule, and we're talking about it before. Before we started, so it's okay. I was we just got, tip of the iceberg, right? <laughs> tons of content. I'm sure like five things will come out during this podcast that we'll just talk about anyway. So that's that's the one thing. That's what actually the rate of expansion of technology is it's getting insane and absurd. Like there's like that thing where it's like from 1400 to 1500, basically nothing happened, and and from there on back, whatever. However, but at 1900, sort sort of like the late 1800s. When like cars and shit started kind of coming around, since then, it's like every decade it just becomes more and more and more exponential. The rate of increase is vast. Yeah, the invention of the transistor, way back when, yeah, is what took it took everything to another level, to a whole another level. Mm-hmm. And then leave it to wartime. Well, yeah, just yeah, always spur production. But yep. yeah. you guys have seen Imitation Game, right? Oh the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, I don't Keira think I've seen Knightley. that one. Mm-mm. It's about um, the story of Alan Turing. Yeah, Alan Turing. He's the one. He decrypted the Nazi code using a computer, oh, okay. but it was a mechanical, like a mechanical right. ones and zeros computer, and he was able to figure that out. And uh, they were able to decrypt all the encrypted messages that the Nazis were sending to each other. Nice. He was the first real hacker and computer scientist and everything. Oh, he's the godfather of it all. Yeah, man, I gotta watch that now. Yeah, yeah. it's good. No, it's fantastic. It's a really good I think movie. It's on Netflix now too. Oh fuck, it, it has been, been for a updating while. with mm-hmm. like all the good movies lately. They got to do something. Disney's yeah, about to Disney's pull out their shit. <laughs> Disney is. Ooh. I think it launches in December. So yeah, yeah and I'm going and I have to try it out. I'm obligated to because I got a three year old. So uh, he, no, gonna- no, I'm going to do it too because I'm a corporate buy in <laughs> idiot. No, I mean I I read an interesting article about like. Netflix. So it was, it was like talking about how Disney and Netflix, like Disney's probably going to win this one. And I was at first, I was like, that's crazy. I mean, it's Netflix. Netflix is killing it. They're destroying cable companies left and right. Like, but yeah, but Redbox also did away with a lot of movie stores and now they ain't doing shit. Yeah. But like Mm. what they noted was, uh, I think, I don't know. It was, it might've been a Forbes article or something, but what they noted was, Netflix didn't change what we watched. It just changed how we watched it. Right. We went from streaming or we went from cable to streaming. Yep. And now, now they've, I mean, for the last two years or so, they've been pouring gobs of money into original content because, and I'm guessing they recognized this a long time ago, mm-hmm. they needed to change what we were watching. Like right now, I'm not going to leave Netflix because Netflix originals. Right. Like, yeah. I may also get Disney they Plus, but I'm not ones. going to drop Netflix. Oh, no, no, no. Netflix yeah. originals yeah. are fantastic. Yeah, and, and that's actually pretty key. Like, that, that article pointed it out. And, yeah, that that was uh, whenever they did the last price uh, raise on it. I didn't yeah. really care because they said they were putting forth that money into new originals, new movies, original uh, yeah, movies or TV. And, dude, they're spending movie like movie theater movie budgets on these fucking things that one without pacino had a hundred million dollars no they're definitely in the hole if i remember correctly i think that's man what i heard is they're so far in the hole that there is no digging i heard they probably are gonna go belly up 
especially when this Disney thing just because they own fuck everything. Yeah, no, Fox. that was the point. Like Disney could Lucas. literally just pull the plug on anybody That's having it. anything. Yeah, and that's too they, powerful, man. Yeah, they own so much, um, but I mean, it it's is too what it much. is at that point. There's gonna be fucking two companies in the future, dude: Amazon and Disney. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah. No, Amazon is just a mega house of everything. Yeah, I've kind of stopped using them just out of principle. I'm like, this is too much. Yeah. I just go back to. I'm too old, man. I, I want to go to box stores. I don't want them to disappear. <laughs> well, the thing that, like, I don't know. I'm I, I have an overarching philosophical thesis that I've yet to to write my dissertation on. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone listening, I'm not in college. Um, but it's that humanity endlessly over almost anything will march towards convenience, which is why I don't yeah. think companies like. Amazon or I mean even with like the whole like internet privacy thing being a big thing right now I don't think people care as much as they think they do just because they're at the end of the day if it's either Google gets none of my information or my GPS works guess what I'm going to choose you know and like I'm like there's a point where like even Amazon you know Amazon shopping like the the platform that we all use it's a pretty tiny chunk of Amazon. Amazon makes most of their money off of web service platforms that that other, AWS. Yeah, I use it for my job. Other companies so. host on and depend on for their entire infrastructure, like online infrastructure, and that's where a giant bulk of their money comes from. To the point where I'm pretty sure they could just get rid of the Amazon shopping part, but I think that's just how they connect to normal people, <laughs> um, and that's pretty much the point of it but i mean that trillion dollar market cap primarily came from web services and you know I, the whole idea of amazon aws and how it came to be in the first place mm -hmm. oh, their aws is their uh it's their uh web service it's their cloud like google cloud and stuff like that uh where you can build servers build networks and stuff like that um so basically you know amazon's busiest during really December, yeah, you know, Black Friday, you know, Thanksgiving through Christmas, right? Yep. So they're super busy during those times. During the other times, they have servers that they didn't use. And so like they let so one use so them? one day in a meeting, somebody's like, "Why don't we make use of these servers that we're not using during the downtime to make some money for yeah. you know the the servers that didn't need to be used." And that's how it started oh. off. Just to a trillion dollars begins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then that's how they started it off. Uh, whenever you first start with AWS years ago, uh, it would your servers would be a little bit slow during peak Times. Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah. holidays. But now they make so much money now that they're their own functioning Server service now. Yeah. God, so, yeah. How many? How many? How many fucking acres do you think servers take up in this country? <laughs> oh, God. that's a good question. Um, I actually, have no my, idea, honestly. My, my <laughs> boss actually went to the AWS, uh, one of the AWS uh, buildings, server farms in Virginia. It's Virginia, Oregon. Uh, I think there's one in Chicago as well. I'm surprised they're not like in like Wyoming. Um, he right? went to the one in Virginia, and he said that all the server farm is entirely underground. Oh, oh, um, that's clever. They, uh, they that's have some Terminator shit. <laughs> they have, they have. He said that they have rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of generators, just fucking as far as you can see. Yeah, probably. backup yeah. generators and stuff. So that way, even if the if a hurricane hits Virginia, it doesn't matter. No downtime. What the fuck? Yeah, it's it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> I, I was jealous he actually got to go see it. I would love to see the server farm that they I have. I bet you would. I mean, nerd. it makes a lot of sense, too, because, like, on one hand... Big you boner in my of... pants as I walk in. <laughs> yeah. But like, you I'm, a, think, I'm, a, I'm a systems infrastructure you, guy. Yeah. think of that? And then uh, I'm kind of thinking, like, that's how I do it. Like, if I just had... Infinite money? I think of it like... I want to buy a whole bunch of USB cables, the same cable, so I can just have a bunch of them despite whatever device I get, you know? I think of that, but building a server. Right. Like, just build a whole bunch of computers, all the same, you know, parts and everything, scale it, and then, like, okay, I need this much power, whole bunch of freaking generators... Yep. To make sure that you can support that amount of power. And just like, how much space do I need? Build out that space. 
so I guess, I mean, it's not necessarily like logistically sure it's challenging, but it feels like it's actually pretty manageable to just expand like they do. But, um, yeah, like I do a thing that, uh, with, with my infrastructure, my systems, which is auto scaling. So what I've done is I try to build it to where, um, say that it gets rush season for my company and we have two servers and they're sharing resources and they share a database together. Mm. So the information, they're both looking for the same place for information. Okay. So whenever, um, say that it gets really busy, the auto scaling that's set up or whatever, it'll actually add another server in automatically. What? Using code. Yeah, really? It, well, you, you write the code for the auto scale. And, and it just then, boots up. The, yeah, and then it boots up another one. And He's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does this shit for a living. Yeah, that's man. literally his job. <laughs> I'm, I'm here going off my YouTube knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I'm it's, here going off my magazine articles from Twitter knowledge. <laughs> it's, all about, it's all about the Googles and the Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. I, I, Explain. I, I've heard uh, Stack Overflow came in very handy in my CS yeah. classes. People, uh, oh, so for, went, for for what people don't know, Stack Overflow is a website that you go to, and there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of programmers that um, that ask questions on there, and then some people will be like, "Okay, all you gotta do is just add this uh, to your okay. code or do something like that." It's a nerd forum. Yes, yes. And I heard a joke. It was like the hard, the worst, uh, the hardest thing that the Stack Overflow flow programmers have is whenever their servers go down because then they can't look <laughs> they up can't an answer. They can't look up their own answer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's good. How, no. how much, how, I realize everybody's inventing new shit all the time every day, but how much of that stuff is just out there, Earl, do you think? Like, say I wanted to make an app, like we and you have talked about before, like making apps. Mm -hmm. How hard would it really be for someone to just, like myself, who doesn't know jack shit about anything coding, to just go, hmm, I think I'm going to try this out. How long do you think it would take? GitHub like, really? GitHub exists, so huh? probably... I said GitHub exists, so probably not too long. What's GitHub? The idea. GitHub is a code repository. Um, oh, so they just store code? Yep. Yes, and either people make it... Uh, I've used it in the, in the business world, and then I've also used it privately, like publicly, too. So it could be open source or closed source. The person who writes that code... Yeah. It gets to say whether it's sure. public for anybody to use shareware or, or not. not. Yeah. 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 Like, I mean, there's programs that you can get on there. There was one that I saw. Oh yeah. It was that called, it, it was called off. the program was called make me a sandwich. And okay. what you would do is in, in the terminal, you would say pseudo in on the, you know, the terminal. Yeah, the terminal. I know terminal. Okay. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> okay. I know terminal. All right. So you would say pseudo make me a sandwich and describe your sandwich with the tags on it or whatever. Okay. And it would send it to the nearest Jimmy John's and <laughs> you can go pick it up. What? Yeah, I mean, it's there's there's all sorts of wild things on there that's like, okay, I don't know if I'd use it, but that's cool. Am I to believe that the Jimmy John's app uses that? Yeah, they One probably took it. They they probably probably I, I mean, that seems like a smart thing to do. Like, you're, all right, guys, let's make our app. Yep. All right, copy, well, paste, and just, done. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody make the, the UI. And yeah. Just tag that Get a there. graphic designer in here now. Oh, Stat. true. <laughs> so do you have to, yeah, how the fuck does that work, man? How does the design. UI over the function work? Like the 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 function of it, but how do how do you do you write what it what you see too? Yeah, you code the UI. Oh, that's fucking and crazy. And then you like assign so like you got button classes that you can mm -hmm. assign to a particular like function. Like back, forward, yeah. add. I haven't mm. really gotten to dive into like because like I was I told myself. I so was you kinda, took coding too, right, Eric? Yeah. So I spent like two years in school and. Part of what I did was CS. Like, okay. I was going there for engineering. So you're slightly ahead of the curve. A little bit, yeah. I learned, like, a couple of languages, um, most notably, what did we learn? Java, Python, Scratch, and there's a couple other obscure ones that were more, like, specific industries, but... Python's cool. Fuck Java. Lovely. Fuck Java. <laughs> no, I agree, but listen. With, with, with every, so, every so inch of my being. In Java's defense. Here comes the base. So I learned Java own. first. No. <laughs> I didn't know Python until like two years after I learned Java. Because I learned Java in high school. Um, I learned Python in college. How old are you, Eric? And I was 22. Oh, God damn. All right. But, we're, we're old fucks. Um, 
I, I thought he was like 25. I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe I'm losing my baby face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so I learned Java. It was first, probably more hope than anything. And I agree, like Java's a pain in the ass. But dude, when I got to Python, I was like amazed that things could be this simple. <laughs> it's <laughs> very Java just the syntax is so simple yes, with Python. Java yes. requires you to define everything. And Python's just like, oh, you want an integer? Here you go. Yeah. Like, I don't care how you use it. Just, But at the same time, I did find a use for Java. So um, the summer after my first year, I was in this, uh, this research intern thing. Well, on campus, but it was with a professor at the school. Right. And uh, we were actually working on music software. So it was... It was something he had started like 10 years prior and had just been working on each summer mm-hmm. with a g- new group of students. But it was basically to help people learn how to improv uh, jazz. And it used basically machine learning to analyze jazz artists of the past and like their solos to get a style that was reminiscent of them. Oh, that sounds super um, cool. And then we were just kind of <laughs> building together an interface and in like all these different programs to build into the software to help someone learn. So I was there in year 10, I think of this program going on. Um, but that was Java based from the beginning. Um, and it would have taken too long by the time Python was a consideration to port everything over. So we just stayed in Java and it was actually really useful because there were a ton of different programs within that software that if we didn't have to be as specific as Java requires, It might not have really like it would have worked. Yes, but it would have been really easy to accidentally basically reference other programs that shouldn't have been referenced just because it wasn't classed exactly uh, the right way. So I will say Java did help a lot then. Um, And that was just like but it just even still, you know. Python is is Google's go to, and you could certainly argue Google is complex at this point in terms of everything that they're connected to. And then so with machine with machine learning, I think Google has Go, the Go language as well for oh, machine learning. Mm-hmm. And I we had with my company we had one Go app, but we ended up changing it because Aren't, it was too much maintenance. Aren't a lot the of them trying to switch to machine learning? YouTube. Has done that. I mean, honestly, it's it depends on idea. what the function is, the function of, of the website. Uh, yeah, the function of the application. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really so, what it boils down to. Going back to the Netflix debacle, apparently, look at see here the the scale of them dropping year over year. Mm-hmm. So they have an investors that actually invest in their debt as like a assurance that eventually it'll come back. But from what I'm reading here, they would need to grow from the 300 or so million they have right now in order to start turning profits and not close to half the population of Earth. They need 3 billion subscribers at their current rate Mm. to make up for all the lost debt and continue on the path that they're currently on. So essentially that does not seem going to die. Yeah, it doesn't seem good. They're down 36 percent in the last five months of 2018. So, and that's a Q4 just happened or a Q1, Q2. I mm. can't remember. Q2 just happened. Is Q2 over? Right? Pretty sure. One of them just I'm happened. Sure they did an Q2. earnings call earlier last month. Maybe that was Q1. But My anyway. fiscal year is different than Netflix. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But they are not, uh, man, damn, that's sad to see. I love Netflix. Although I will say their Netflix originals haven't been hitting as hard lately. So... Yeah. The Adam Sandler thing was all right. <laughs> I, I, oh man, I haven't the seen the stand-up or the movie with Jennifer Aniston. Both. Oh, I haven't seen the movie yet. The stand-up I'm, is basically ADD. I'll be honest, I feel in, like I've already seen the movie in once. visual form. It's Clue. <laughs> it's fucking Clue. If oh, you've okay. seen Jennifer yeah. Aniston and, and and Adam Sandler in one together, yeah, you you've saw seen him. them all. I I feel like it's uh, it's okay. It it wasn't the best one I've seen. I actually like the ridiculous six or whatever it was better. And that's mm-hmm. the thing. It's like they spend. I mean, it costs a lot of money to get actors like that on on board. So, like, if they're spending that much money, they need to make damn sure it's a great movie. Yeah, because you know, I will say most actors are kind of falling, not minding going to Netflix either, because they know that it's a 
it's a huge market to be in and if their name is on it they can grow themselves as well yeah so. this this article is pretty damning uh disney made 41 billion while netflix lost 13 billion over 2011 like, to 2018 disney as a whole company disney as a whole company okay which also includes Lucas, Fox, well, Fox this year, but Lucasfilm, Marvel, mm -hmm. Disney original content, yeah, and a host of other rated uh, R services. Toy Story that just came out and killed it. I haven't gotten like to see it. Two hundred no million dollar, some odd yeah. for still the got, opening weekend. I still got to see it. This highest week. grossing animated film ever. As First it weekend, be, as it should honestly. be. Dude, have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. It's fucking amazing. Okay, sweet. The animation is jaw dropping. And That's the, what I heard. That's what and, like everyone was like. This is and, like real life. And right? honestly, I was kind of concerned because like, where do you take this? You already had a perfect trilogy. How, don't honestly, fuck this up. yeah. Toy Story three Dude, had me reeling. So. They went. They went comedy. It's really okay. one of the funniest films this year I've seen. It's hysterical. Did Lasseter still <laughs> run? No, Lasseter's been let go. <clears throat> oh, okay, I thought. Uh, yeah, I know. Interesting. He got because that's kind of his he baby. Got in some, he got in some hot water with some stuff, but I don't want to get into that part. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But he, yeah, he's no longer the head of animation at Disney. Man. Which sucks, I but, didn't you know, know that. he did what he did, so it's kind of on him at the same time. Yeah. But, uh, sorry, I just wanted to get back into that Netflix thing. I was trying to read this article while you guys were talking. This, well, no, they're I mean, fucked. Part of, me is like, <laughs> part of me is like, oh, it's not fair to compare because Disney has all these, but at the same time, it doesn't matter. I it mean, says right here, uh, as of January, they needed five hundred million at twenty bucks a month just to justify the share price, without additional price increases or their losses. Yikes. So they were barely making these seventeen bucks worth. It. Yeah, dude. So <laughs> yeah, and that's I, assuming you have a four K TV, honestly. I Which they've been playing this game of like, oh, you get four on like four simultaneous streams at a time. That's. And I'm personally like, why aren't you milking that into getting more people signed on instead yeah. of like four people on one account? Why don't you just drop it to two? Yeah. Yep. Well, and that's what the HD account is. The HD, So they have the very base level one, yeah. which is non-HD, one screen. The HD version is two which screens. Which is what, eight bucks? Yeah, seven ninety nine, nine nine bucks. HD nine two bucks. screens yeah. is what I have. Yeah, HD two screens is 12 bucks. But even the then, HD, that's a horse shit. The fucking streaming. Well, yeah, the bit coming in. Is, the bit rate is garbage. I, I had to prove that one to our our buddy Kurt. No, because I was. <laughs> you watch was... a 4K Blu-ray over what they call 4K stream. It's oh yeah, no, he's converted. Oh, it's <laughs> it's jaw dropping. Apples different. and oranges. Yeah. I remember I was uh, I was trying to figure out like so one when 4K Blu-ray started like really hopping on and they were sending digital copies. I was like, is there any chance like 4K digital Blu-ray copies are going to be a thing? No, no. I looked up like I looked up um, even the Apple TV 4K upgrade isn't fucking 4K. It's like not, even if you it's wanted to 4K. rip a 4K Blu-ray, it's those like 60 bit rates gigs. are so absurd. Yeah, and like now I understand what it means to have a Blu-ray player. It's yeah. literally a processor yeah. to deal with that much information coming through. Like and, you're and, going to have 80 gigs off of a disc at least. Oh yeah, dude. And that's for like a 80 short to movie. 100 gigs. Imagine no a, a movie like infinity war in game where 90% of the film is I CGI. Wait too. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. All that yeah. level of detail. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude. It's, it's just staggering. But I mean, between the bit rate, the color information, the audio that they bake in as well. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a dumb amount of information. Always. If you, if you, if you got a movie and you want to go watch it for real, you have to get the Blu-ray. But you that's also where I'm excited for what machine learning slash AI yeah. can do for us because no doubt putting AI to the task of do better you think, compression algorithms. I was going to say, do you think compressing it on their end and having a better uncompressor on our end is the real final result in that? Yes. Because it has to be small enough to send. So, you can't send right, 80 gigs. Right. It would but take to, nine hours but before to, the movie would load. But to de yeah, I was going to say, to decompress, you'd have to have a really awesome processor yeah. and then to most process people, that decompress. Well, and most people are going to the TV market, so these... I mean, like Samsung and LG are making TVs, but they're not putting these gargantuan processors in these televisions. So, you know, a lot of people are moving away from the, the box, the mm -hmm. Apple TV, the Roku, they're going mm -hmm. just the fucking TV comes with it in there. Yeah, Why I mean, would I even TV need this? Does have a lot of it built in. Um, I think so it's, it's playing on a few different fronts. So 
Addressing the camera side, because I've been keeping up quite a bit with that, there's a few cameras as of late um, that have been introducing some new codecs. So one, if you're familiar with ProRes, um, yes. that is Apple's standard for yes. uh, basically really fluid, uh, easy to, to process video that they specifically Apple computers could deal with. Um, so they introduced something else called ProRes RAW. And the idea behind that was if you shoot raw video, which yep. is extremely large files, but you're getting pretty much all of the sensor information of what it's capturing to manipulate and post and like essentially all the metadata, all the yep. sensor information is great. So ProRes RAW essentially took the, and I'm, I'm not going to go in super depth because <laughs> I can still butcher how it's working, but <laughs> it's essentially, you've got the usability of ProRes, the easy to manage and the file sizes that mm -hmm. come with the much lower file sizes, but with the flexibility of raw, um, black magic designs doing the same thing. They came out with black magic raw for their cameras and it's open source to an extent. So any camera company ideally could work with black magic to get it on their cameras um atomos is running with prores raw atomos and black magic have this thing so we probably won't see that on their monitors but that being said essentially what's happening is when you shoot off a camera like you shoot raw for most any camera um all of that raw information is just mm -hmm. there and then it has to be debayered in post it has yep. to essentially be turned into a usable image what these camera companies are doing are, is allowing the camera to do part of that debayering in camera, but nice. much more efficiently because obviously the camera knows what it's supposed to look like. Right. You know, the, right. the manufacturer at least. Because yeah, it's sucking in the image, yeah. Right, and yeah. so it's sucking in the image. The camera manufacturer knows how that image is supposed to be interpreted the best. So part of that process is happening there, which leaves you to only have to do the other half of the job on your computer and you get to work with the smaller file sizes, um, mm. but still get essentially the same level of image quality. There's been some very minor discrepancies, but I mean, you're essentially getting 95% the image in wow. comparison, um, which is a big deal. That means, so I was, I was a part of a short film uh, about a month and a half ago, I think. And we shot everything on Blackmagic's Ursa Mini Pros. And it was with that Blackmagic RAW update. Everything that we shot over the course of a week fit, it was about two and a half terabytes worth of footage. Shit! If we had been shooting that in their standard cinema DNG raw, it would have been closer to like five to seven times that amount of storage given what compression we were at. Good um, lord! For so, a short film? For a short film. So that's a big deal because, I mean, scaled, you know when you look at these big budget productions, no shit. <laughs> they just tear through. Fo I mean, it's absurd yeah. and they tear through computers to deal with that yeah. kind of footage. So if you get all of these companies, basically, because realistically any company could just go and do this kind of type of like raw format, you know, if Ari wanted to do it, if they invested the time and whatnot, they could create something where essentially the camera is processing down part of the, the file and then right. it's, it's handing the rest right. of that off. So then you end up with less massive RE files. Then you end up with less massive. Well, this is essentially what uh red code raw is for red cameras. Yeah. Uh, it's a similar process. So all of this means your input information is a lot smaller. You're still getting the same amount of flexibility. The technology is improving. So we're going to get better flexibility over time. Um, then you have things like uh, DaVinci Resolve as a software. Uh, if you buy it, they have their X2, uh, X264 encoder, which is basically a much, much faster way to deal with H.264. Mm. So it's like not so – basically, they kind of cracked the code on that one. So it's very easy to run through standard MP4 H.264 footage. Yeah. So it's just like the process is getting streamlined and and – compressed so to speak yeah um all the way down the line so then if we're getting smaller file sizes from cameras we're yep. getting better handling when we get to the computer then the rest is output and at that point you don't mm. even have as much information to that you have to output now we're also getting tvs that can process more yeah so TVs i mean it's just crazy, the bottleneck dude. is becoming less of a bottleneck it's becoming just kind of a straight pipe 
And I, I think, would like that. Yeah. I yeah. Th- I, I think that that looks really good as far I as the still future. Feel like we're at least 10 years before it's, and it's already here, but I mean, affordable. Yeah. Here's Cause we already have 8k. We already have 8k cameras. We're already like, yeah. we're at, we we're almost completely bypassing 4k as a usable medium. Like how many people have it? I don't fucking have it. My mm. phone does it, but I'm not watching shit on my phone in 4K. Yeah. So it's like by the time I'm by the time 4K is like down there, that's good 4K. I'm not talking about these bullshit $200 Vizio 4Ks. That's not a real 4K, but like real decent, awesome 4K. Mm. 8K is going to be the dominant source anyway. Yeah, I mean 8Ks are just this first year is actually yeah the this year time. is the first yeah. time it's hitting consumer markets because Samsung and Sony dropped yep. theirs, and Canon already has an 8K. Film they have camera, their 8K camera. Yep. Red has their 8K camera. Uh, there's a bunch of random camera companies coming out of the woodworks <laughs> lately, <laughs> like Zcam. <laughs> Sharp is making an 8K camera. No. Actually, they they showed a prototype at uh, at NAB. It's actually looking pretty good. Like the footage looks all right. Um, projection is another thing they're using. Projection that is, is that getting insane. Digital I mapping want a projector and, right now. But, that, that I saw uh, the Canon conference. They only do every few years, mm-hmm. and they had one that was digitally printing a brick wall and I fucking swear to God, man, looked it like looked brick wall. like a brick wall. Like it was <laughs> like, Whoa, you can just that. They just, they just made a brick wall and put it in their thing. No, that was a, as a projection of a brick wall mm. and it was jaw dropping, dude, jaw dropping. That's crazy. So, yeah. Whatever the last Canon conference was, look that up. That was dude. <laughs> I mean, it was how in the fuck? No, Canon's uh, printers are insane. Because yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. the main yeah. players in photo printing right now are Epson and Canon. Like, those are the two yep. big dogs. For the and, consumer market, for sure. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But Canon... A large format. The you get range a whole of, of printers that Canon has is absurd. Like, that, they, they do have technology. They basically have what can be equated to 3D printing technology as well for like yeah. a large format print. But anyway, that, that's its own thing. But the other <laughs> thing I was going to say, the end of the pipeline is bandwidth. Oh, uh, well, that like well, fuck internet. Yeah, but and we keep fucking really that up. The only thing we're waiting for is that internet revolution, that whole 5G's bringing gigabit. That Whatever. May or may not happen. It's If it does, great. It's not I that have we very little need faith gigabit, in it. but yeah. the point is just that's the really the last step. I feel like camera companies and kind of the, the middle of the, like your processing, yeah. I feel like that's doing its job. The and ISP is really the, the bottleneck at this and point. And the only reason they're having to amp things up is because, yeah, internet is yeah. just it's kind of taking its sweet time. Well, the internet here in this yeah. country is fucking dog shit. No, it's definitely trash compared to It's like to 50 countries. megs, 100 megs. It's still barely enough. Yeah. Barely. And you get 100 megs, it's like, yeah, this is workable. Well, it feels and, smooth, but it still like has its moments where you're like, "What a pile of shit!" I've got three things on in this house, and all of a sudden it's fucking it's six. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I remember me and Earl bitching in the early days about ISPs. Like, what the fuck? Uh, my my was, uh, opinion has not changed. No, no, it like was I, well, it was here. Like, dude, I was fucking paying for ten, getting one, and I'm like, then why the fuck am I paying? Am I paying for ten? You're promising something you can't deliver. You're a piece yeah. of shit. That's when I dropped him. I was like, I'm done with you. That was AT and T. It was yeah. always fun explaining, like, when I worked at Best Buy, like explaining to people how, like, how you couldn't just not spend some amount of money on like a router. Yeah. Just like so, I would. I literally, I had a diagram that I created because I got, I got kind of tired of like trying to go through the spiel from from beginning to end off the top of my head. So I created a diagram because I had this conversation so much of like basically beginning to end, how it's coming from your, your uh, ISP down to how it gets to you, how your neighbors are a factor, how um, just like how your router plays into it, how your modem plays into it. And like explaining to people that it's not just like, just buy any old piece of shit and connect it. And you got Wi-Fi and everything will work. Because, like, the big thing was, like, everybody... This was in the middle of the the uh, the boom of, like, wireless device. Like, your home becoming truly a wireless home. Like, everything being... On a wireless net. Yeah, yeah, on a wireless network. So, people were like, oh, well, I'm, like, I have That's... this router that I've had for five, seven years. Yeah. And I can't connect. I was like, okay, what do you have? Well, I just got... Some new wireless cameras. <laughs> that blue one? What um, the fuck? I just that got, Linksys? 
<laughs> oh yeah, the the WRT routers. Yeah, <laughs> fucking thing. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I've got this. I got uh, uh, I've got Sonos wireless speakers. I've got uh, Google Assistant or whatever. Yeah. I've got all these different things. Literally like, twenty fucking things running you on. You have Wi-Fi, twenty yeah. things on your network. Yeah. This router seven years ago could deal with two, two, maybe at right on the like box. barely broadband speed. So I was like, <laughs> you need to get a better router. Okay, well, what looks good? Well, um, oh, I should just get. So they would either go for the cheapest thing or the most expensive. It was always yeah, funny because yeah, yeah. rarely people needed the most expensive thing. The most expensive thing, gamers. Well, so gamers, as far as like dealing with input lag, but mm-hmm. or or uh, latency, but. Mm-hmm. The other part was like, there's a point where a lot of people's problems are space. Um, these routers couldn't ever deal with, you know, 5,000 square foot houses to begin with, but. Oh, true. Still, the signal sending. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, yeah, now we have a mesh network routers. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's great. Great technology. Glad it's here. <coughs> but people didn't understand that because we never had it. So it was like, it was hard to help them understand like okay excuse me sir you need three routers yeah basically yeah. like or like the reason one you really can't... awesome router what's with those like little two extenders yeah or something. extenders yeah and so like i was trying to ex- and s- there were still only like four good extenders on there out of the right. 12 or 13 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right um and they were not the cheapest one <laughs> but this is still just hard to like explain that like okay you could never support your whole house yes i could well ma'am you had a flip phone yeah. Seven years. Like, it's not the same. So you couldn't really support your network before. Your house is massive. These better routers certainly support more space, but they have a pretty hard limit. And then once you start getting higher bandwidth above them, all you're doing is just increasing maybe how many devices Here, that here's can one. still get in that same Man, space. where's your router? It's in my basement. Love it. <laughs> or in my closet behind yeah. a brick wall. Like, yeah. just... In the attic. Well, ma'am, how many? Well, it's a three-story house, and yeah. I got to go through two floors to get to my kitchen. Yeah, I'm just and like, my TV or my yeah. refrigerator. And go to and through a literal firewall, not yeah. the not the yeah. tech firewall, yeah. but a firewall, a, an actual steel fucking yes. firewall. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just like, ma'am, for your three to five to eight thousand square foot house, you need a badass router. It's yeah. just it's the case. But it was also explaining to them that yeah. like. Also, your ISPs are kind of fucking you over. Yep. And that's something that, unfortunately, on Dude, the consumer hasn't, side, hasn't AT&T, we have to just find a way to get around. Hasn't AT&T moved to a cap? They're not, not yes, unlimited. they started introducing they caps. caps. I have, I have a cap. Away. Fuck those. I have a cap. Is it 256? Uh, it's like no. 250 or 500 gigs, and PM. then they no, slow no, you down. For right? mine is one terabyte, a thousand gigs. Wow, so that's it, but, a lot. Yeah, but, but, but on with the Netflix service. and stuff yeah. like that, I get really close to that every cap. month. And yeah, well, I do have a three year old who now likes now does to watch it, does it overcharge or does it? It charges you uh, it charges. after charges. after I think after you hit your cap. They charge you like every 15 every. Gigs or I was gonna say ten to fifteen gigs. They charge you ten dollars. Fuck that. Like that! Are you no, serious? That absurd. But See, no, that fuck was that shit, man. Because that was never a concern. And then I had one customer who was like, "Oh, well, they have a cap," and I was like, "No, ISPs don't have caps, ma'am. I'm sorry." And she's like, "No, I can show you." And she like pulls up her account, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" There was a three hundred fifty gig limit on her plan. I was what like, "What the fuck?" Oh man, I'd, I'd burn that in a week. And and mind oh, you, I understand why they put it on. But also, I don't because no, I'm like, fuck them. Nah, that that's not actually a problem. It's not like, oh, I, I really only got space for 350. I'm like, no, that, per person. There's not. Yeah. There's not some storage threshold that matters to them. So I'm just like, you're trying to find another way to yeah, bring that's out it. Some They're cash. just milking it. Yep. Yeah, and which I understand because you know Comcast was well, losing customers on the cable side, so they got to amp it up on the internet side, but. It still was just like, all oh, right. What are they amping up? They're just fucking people over. No, mine I mean, doesn't true, do that yet. I'm, I'm happy. I have cable internet here, Fidelity, but mm-hmm. I hope I hope they don't move to the cap system. Good. A lot of them seem to be. I that think Verizon has caps. I, I like about being downtown that internet that internet company that services us downtown. Yeah. Like they don't have caps. Like none of that. They're really, I don't have caps. They're well, great. Nice. But as um, a person who works from home and. Always, yeah, I always have background too. noise. Like I'll have Twitch on sure. or something, something in the background. Yeah, because you work at home, you code at home. Yes, right. Yes, just to let people know you're, you're extra nerdy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The no, that's like his entire you. job. What do you do? For, what's your job title? My job title is systems engineer. Okay, 
So that infrastructure, one security, okay. DevOps. <laughs> yeah. Basically, developers come to me and be like, hey, I have an update for this app, or I made this new app. It needs to sit somewhere. All right, I'll build it for you. I'll build the net for it. Just give me like a week. Yeah. Wait, so are you essentially Gilfoil in Silicon Valley? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I literally yes. just started this, watching that like the, a week and the, a half ago. <laughs> no. Speaking of Silicon Valley, have you seen Silicon Valley? The show? Yeah. yeah. No. Dude, okay. It's amazing. Well, there, all right. So, <laughs> so you're going to you're going to get this reference. Everyone so gives me there shit. was a I don't store. Watch there was a store that thought that they were being <sighs> DDoS, mm-hmm. and I was flipping out because that's that everybody that's turns side. to me. That's right. that's that's you you hit up URL. He's the one who's going to do that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I'm looking. I'm freaking out. I'm looking at the server, and dude, it's. Oh I'm looking God, at the logs. Like, I'm looking at the logs in everything. real time, and it's being hit. Somebody had a book on the keyboard, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, yeah, oh yeah. my god, the Russ like, Hanneman, yes, <laughs> that's amazing, <laughs> yes, and I was flipping out for a good thirty minutes because oh I'm like, how god. in the world did 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 it get attacked? I don't know how it got into the system. I don't know how they did it. Da, 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 da. That's a great, and then that, and then Ed, uh, Ed, my boss, calls me. He's like, um, don't worry about that DDoS, uh, uh message that you got i was like why he's like well i called the store and come to find out there was a book on the keyboard and i was like get the fuck out of here a book yeah a like, fucking book. no that was i'm like all right now i'm gonna go outside and smoke a half a pack of cigarettes <laughs> yeah, after yeah. that there was Jesus. literally an episode there of, of silicon valley just like that though like yeah there was that yeah that scene they, like yeah. they were they handling thought- traffic from a, a porn website like getting <laughs> basically a third of their library to compress <laughs> And all of a sudden, all of it started getting deleted. And it was because one of their backers, like, came in and set his tequila bottle on the delete key uh, <laughs> on the on the primary laptop. And oh, so it was just man. deleting through everything. And they're freaking out. Yeah. What's going on? It's just deleting. I think that guy's attacking us. And he just looks over at the bottle. And he's just mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. No, and yeah, he looked key. it up. And then uh, the main character's like, it stopped. It stopped. It stopped. And he was like, yeah. It stopped. You know? <laughs> and then they like they go to the the freaking the owner of the site and they're just like, so yes, we we did delete a third of your library, but on the bright side, it was the single fastest deletion <laughs> of any of our competitors. Which I, I think is, I mean, uh, you know, if 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 our network was slower, our our our, our service was slower, it it would have been worse. I mean, uh, better, uh, worse. It would. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, count Incredible it, children. count it, thumbs up for efficiency, right? <laughs> okay, so before we got here, Earl, we were getting deep dived on uh, consciousness and the downloading. How, you know, like putting your brain on a computer. What do you think? Yes, no? Too much like the Matrix? Too much like the Terminator? 20 years. What? Okay, are, 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 hold on, let's, let's play a game. Consciousness as in just like uh, your saving your fuck, memories no, your fucking or your personality, brain, you, everything. I, I plug you in, I download you, you're now in a fucking computer. That. I mean, there's questions also of how that will work because it there's yeah. the question of can you transfer consciousness over or okay. would it be copied? And yeah, yeah. Would you what, is it a copy or does your brain just, or does your body just drop dead right there? Let Hold on, let's play a game. All right, how many years do you think this is till you think this is possible? Eric? 20. 20? Because of AI. I'm saying 30. What do you think, Earl? I'll probably <clears throat> take middle of the road and say 25. 25? I would also like to say that from I think Stanford, it be possible in 20 they think years. 10 years. Really? That's fair. Honestly. <laughs> That's I just, disgusting. <laughs> AI, AI is terrifying. accelerated <laughs> growth so dramatically. The, Dude. The, the possibilities of growth are absurd. So you AI. think they're going to use AI on top of uh, human mapping to, they have to. to well, figure out the equation? I mean, they AI is to. already being used to watch comments on like Twitter and Facebook oh, yeah. and all yeah. that. Like, they have AIs that check for things. I mean, they do it, have some people the that AI still... AI is what flags it, and then it goes to human review yeah. because the AI is and technically still pretty stupid. Eventually, that won't stupid. be necessary. Yeah. Eventually, there will be enough of a library built yeah. to where that reference won't be necessary. Isn't but that, that it, it's essentially the thing that like it's the nuance of human interaction that that takes a while for that's something that you've spent as a person excuse me that you've spent you know 20 how 25 however many years being embedded in 
Wasn't that Kapchka shit that machine like teaching AI what images look like? Well, no. So Cap, there's an interesting story about that. So they've had to. Have you noticed that whenever those things come up, now it's one of those recognize a brick or something in yeah. these six photos, and you yes. have to click which one. The reason they've had to keep changing things, you know, they go from just be able to type a word to right. the words are all squiggly to all of this was because people were using machine learning to break those and the machine would learn how to do it. And so they had to advance to another step. Okay. But now they're reaching a critical point where people are now not able to, because I mess those up all the time, but people are having a hard time doing the thing. <laughs> And now it's not an yeah. accurate descriptor of who's a person, who's a robot, because oh. robots are getting the same. Or yeah, there's a meme floating codes. around about yeah. that, where the car's taillight is like a centimeter in the next frame, and it's like, <laughs> and, do and I click? Peel, yeah. Peel sweating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jordan Peele. Yeah. yeah. That's a good fucking meme. He's just like, damn it, I'm gonna have to do this again. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. That, yeah. I, how, how did I miss that one car? <coughs> Dad. <laughs> Dude, and then sometimes it'll repeat. It's like, no, try again. You're like, bitch, I just fucking said. And then you see and you're like, oh, come on. Are you kidding me? There's like a tire in the top right hand corner. Like, fuck off with it. And they're just like, it was there, bitch. Uh -huh. Ca <laughs> Capture three. We need your DNA to make sure that you're not a robot. But I think there's it's a finger just... pricker on your new MacBook. Uh, yeah. <laughs> give, give, give it Are some blood. Are y'all familiar with the Facebook story? The Facebook AI story? Fuck that whole ass I company. told you about that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wait, yeah. Which one is it? Um, The... The AI teaching AI thing that they yeah, had dude, a few years that. ago. Fuck yeah. That. So that, while that's terrifying, it's and, terrifying, but that is the reason I think it, there's not really an accurate way of discussing how quickly we can get to yeah. certain advances in technology because <sighs> one, we couldn't even track that, but two, the whole point, like the thing that's big about AI is that AI is able to consciously work on a problem using all of its resources in a way that people can't. Yeah. And so because of that, it's able to learn significantly faster. And then the other part of it is we have a, like we can create AI to teach other AI how to learn even faster and be more efficient. So because of that, there are feats and there are things happening right now that five years ago yeah we were saying would be never a crazy yeah. future you know and even you know 30 years ago we were saying 2019 is gonna be flying cars, flying and, cars I'm like, and bullshit well no we have electric cars but self-driving flying cars, cars may Honestly, significant like be a significant thing in five years probably will be in the sense of like Self-driving, flying taxi. Well, hell, flying taxis know. are a thing in Dubai. The flying right now, thing would actually take a but, lot more than just I feel like technology. Because even Neil deGrasse Tyson said it. He was actually real adamant. He was like, "That's stupid. You already have flying cars. They're called helicopters, and they're terrible." And he was. I mean, yeah. So the travel aspect comes you, you, from an efficiency of the technology. But his, that's his still, idea, his idea of the going underground. And you, the when tongue? you go up, when you go up, you technically have as many dimensions as you want, so long as a computer can track it all and tell your car, you're on lane four of 50 levels of yeah. space. But also cars would have to come with fucking uh, oxygen, you know, makers and shit, basically airplanes, like full ass airplanes, yeah, like pressurized cabins, like pressurized cabins, that kind of like shit. That. Because but he was like, but when you the lower you go, that those things don't typically matter. And you can make lanes for even if it's just an egg. You hop into 20 floors down boom, and zip off. You have the same amount of distance. I mean, that's essentially what Elon Musk's boring tunnel is. That's what they're getting to, yeah. Oh, yeah. But even that shit takes some guy like that, some crazy eccentric dude going, I just want to fucking do crazy things. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of him. That's true. And like, look honestly, at the Amazon guy. He fucking at him for too much longer the way these shareholders are playing. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, companies get so gripped by shareholders, too. Like, it's well, just... Once shareholders get involved, it's just like... I think you once you go public, want. it's like, well, you're fucked. Yeah, pretty much. Because now they dictate what the fuck you're supposed to do. Yeah. I hate that. Because what if they don't know shit, which they probably they don't. don't when it comes to they technology? They really do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, right. All, just like that, you can get voted out as CEO. Like that kind of stuff, Should which I Steve still Jobs, think is bro. a crazy Started his own company and got fucking booted get out. kicked yeah. out as yeah. the CEO by your own company. Like, and then Microsoft I feel like there had to save their ass. There should just be some special rule that's like, 
You can't get kicked out of your own company. You believe in us, so you're giving us money. It's just the same as fucking... It's like, uh, what's that money thing? People give you money on the internet. What is uh, that? Like, I know what you're talking about. Like, no, PayPal, like everyone like uses PayPal? It. Not, not PayPal. Or, no, cra- it's like a crowdfund, but what's the one Kickstarter. where Kickstarter. Not Kickstarter. Patreon. Patreon. Oh, that, yeah. That, that's almost the same thing, only they can't fucking fire you. The way they fire you is they just stop giving you money to yeah, do the shit you want to do. Which, you know, it's used by... But see, and that was that was interesting in Silicon Valley's, like, the show, because they kind of describe how things are working. But, I mean, essentially, it's like, you know, when someone funds you, they're funding you. So they would... What was the common thing? It was like, oh, we'll give you $5 million for a $50 million valuation, which is yeah. essentially saying, we'll give you $5 million expecting you're going to make that kind of gain. Yeah, for us. Do a five hundred percent gain. Yeah, I mean it's an investment. Yeah. It's it's we're hoping you pan out. Yeah, and but so, what the fuck? Five hundred percent, a hundred percent, two hundred percent sounds I mean, doable. Yes, but think I think a Facebook. lot of time also being as that they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Their expectations oftentimes are like insane. You read some of these outlooks on the stock market for some of these companies. Well, they were supposed to be here, and it's like, who the fuck ever came up with that shit? There's no way it was the company. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm. Yeah, that's way out of my boat when it comes to stocks and uh, predicting. I feel how, like how that has a lot to do with it. There, but, but I feel like that. A lot ha- of, there's a lot of technology in that too, of figuring well, out the stock market. Dude, what has a lot to do? Oh yeah, my God, it has a lot to do involved. with what these companies are doing. They're only focusing on because they have to do better every year. We got to do better. We got to sell more yeah. of this, more of that, and it's like, well, that's actually pretty fucking stupid. I well, mean, is it 10 still, million phones a year still pretty good? It's still always like, it's this idea of, well, the shareholders say, want yeah. you to do better. The shareholders are like, yes. make us more money. Yes. That's the whole thing. Um, but then also, like, companies seemingly have a realistic expectation of growth because, like, again, Sometimes. Best Buy, I think, was 1%. Like, we want to improve 1% or 2%, I think it was 2%. Yeah, but 2% over like, 20 years. They were like, we want to improve 2% in a year. And I'm like, shit, that's actually a lot. It's a lot. And especially in a market that's declining, how do yes. you expect that to happen? Like, what do you? Well, and that's why they're closing down stores. Yeah, and um, the one but, year closed. Just saying. Well, I mean, that was for a different reason. No, well, I was I was yeah, there when was. that happened. That was <laughs> that was literally that store was like the most expensive plot of land in the entire. state. And then it went up. <laughs> yeah, and then the the owner the went up of, on it. Yeah, the Best value Buy of the property. Like, this isn't fucking worth it. Fuck yeah, that. <laughs> but guess who gave us shit though in the stores when. Fucking every fucking person who came in our store knew about that shit. It was just like, oh, this is why you're closing down the Bryant store because you won't. So I'm like, no, sir, no, that's not why. We just don't want to pay for the land yeah, anymore. It's, it's land. not worth it. Actually, but, the place beside it went out too. So did it? Yeah. I mean, now that's not it's surprising. Empty. That's that, fucking empty. Apparently, that plot of land costs more than like the Chanel store and like the North Little Rock store and the. Benton Welcome store, to Bryant. Uh, Conway store combined. But it hey, was stupid. aren't we talking about consciousness? Look, all I'm saying is the big thing about <laughs> the the important part about that was just like because AI is capable of teaching AI and all the AI can use all of their Terrifying. resources and and brain power at the like same it. time. Constant like there's no reasonable it's learning 24 well, hours a day. Well, I won't say there's no reasonable way to calculate, but I'm saying no. it is not something that we can just go. Well, we now. have a we have it. It's called and Moore's law. It's right here. It's Moore's every law two is ways. in the trash. Yeah, now that's what I'm it's saying. It's like completely in the trash, dude. It's like every six months, like you said when we started this. Five things will get fucking announced. Like uh, the I'm, I'm tossing it to the gaming on this on the Switch. The Super Mario Maker Two came out, mm-hmm. which is fucking awesome. It's my favorite video game Wait, on the Wii U. That? Super Mario Maker Two. You make your own Mario levels, and you oh play. It's it, but, it, and it's a whole community that yes. they make their own levels, and you get to play other people's levels. And this some of them, some of them are God. easy. Some of them are <laughs> god awful hard. Insane. Yeah, they're they're not even. It's like I couldn't do this in twenty. Yeah. I couldn't do this in. I couldn't do this map in twenty years. Yeah, like, no, there's, there's no, no way. way. But that game, just that game is crazy. Because used to, you had to buy a whole ass console, a whole thing. And then when they made a new one, you had to buy that and all this money. Now you buy the one fucking game, and now you have infinite. Because you can just make your own. Mm. They're giving you the control. Fuck it. Here, you make your own thing. And yeah, it's simple because a lot of it, but they just added 3D World. That computation has to be pretty big. I didn't know that they did that. That's awesome. They added all this other new shit. So every Mario game that's ever been made... Has a piece in this new game. 
That's cool. And you can just make whatever the fuck you want. That's cool. I mean, that's kind of like also how No Man's Sky was revolutionary. Not so much in its like, like it had, but the it, it, it had a terrible yeah. start, but the idea yeah, it of had it, a, the idea was insane. I was very, very, very hyped for that game. Me when too. Was me for too. It, I played the shit out of that game for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, still, I mean, I was very impressed by how everything was going. I, the main thing the game did wrong was mainly just what it gave you to do, right. and that's not really a problem of the technology. That's just a problem of the developer, developer. building on top of the tech. But the fact that that tech was a thing like they literally came out they were like yeah there's so many planets and mm -hmm. and unique worlds that in order to explore it you'd have to be alive for several lifetimes yeah plus while you're on a particular world as you're going along it is generating New mathematically ones. yeah in real time much in like real the universe. time yeah and so, like, God, the only thing crazy, that got, dude. like, the that's only why thing I was hyped about it too. Whenever I heard about it, was there seemed so. to be not so well placed boundaries on what a world could be? Because there are some worlds where, I, like, I get on there and it's so. like you get out the ship, radiation poisoning, po like, just like <laughs> yeah. all of this shit, it's just immediately. And you're like, hits I'm gonna you. go back into the ship, yeah, leave, leave this place. And so it's just like you better get your ship out of there; so. it's gonna die too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if yeah. that's possible now. And they have this thing that can just generate worlds as it's going. What do you guys think about? Are we living in a simulation? Uh, are we all? I'm not. I'm not a world? game theorist. I don't believe we live in a simulation. You don't think so? You think this is it? This is real. Uh, as far as I know, yeah, I do believe yeah. that it's real. You don't think reality is, is my reality? If 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 okay. I was in a somewhat matrix or in a simulation, you think there would be more like evidence that? of it? Glitches, things like that. People <laughs> deja vu, hey. yeah, things like that. Right? I just that's think... a glitch. But yeah, no, I I don't believe we're in a simulation. I think no. it's highly probable that we are, but I also don't define real by any. Yeah, because what's real? Yeah, yeah, like I I would say that talking about beer, though, uh, this beer can's empty and I can't will it to be full again. I would still <laughs> suggest that I am real despite being a part of a simulation. Yeah, what, yeah I'm talking about epistemology though, like oh. what like the truth of something, the realness of something. Oh right, that, that's the way that I look at it. So that's fair. If and if we are in a simulation, then that's cool. That's not going to change my reality at all. Cause I'm no, no. Yeah. Cause you're so, a simulated thing. Yeah. So, so it's real. It really you. doesn't mean much to me, but I, I right. don't, I don't think that we are. I, I am kind of terrified of like normalizing the idea simply because sure. the last thing some person who has nothing left to lose needs yeah. is to find out, Oh, Hey, none of us it's are all real fake anyway. Any fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, no nah, clink. I'm, yeah, no, nah. it's bad. So, Nihilists. Nihilists yeah. are weird. That's a weird one, dude. What does it matter anyway? Yeah. Looking at you, TJ Miller. <laughs> I'm looking right. at Eeyore. Eeyore, Eeyore is a total nihilist. <laughs> Nobody but he keeps on keeping on. Nihilist I was introduced to, Eeyore. <laughs> the toy okay, guy. poo. I guess. Who cares anyway? Yeah. yeah. But, um... <laughs> You guys didn't have to do that. <laughs> if we're going to dive into Moore's Law a little bit, because this was coming eventually, so I guess now is as good a time as any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Intel versus AMD. AMD. Because I'm pissed off. <laughs> I'm AMD all the way. But all that's happened. Even when Apple switched, it was a bit ner unnerving. The last two and a half years have been absolutely nerve wracking. <laughs> because nobody will make up their fucking minds and intel won't just admit that amd put them on their ass like that's what happened amd came out said we're ready to play ball now and intel was asleep like that yeah. was just that's just it so and they've been asleep for you they're they're trying to ramp up production now amd figured out it's how to go from what 14 nanometer process to 10 to 7 in the span of two and a half years Intel's been on 10 nanometer plus, 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 plus yeah. for the last like four years. So they yeah. can't figure out how to step it down. Now what Ryzen, th or Ryzen third gen's about to crank up even farther than Intel's doing at like 40% the price. What kind of shit is that? But meanwhile, Intel's like, so here's the well, one. They got that grace. comfortable. They got that comfortable bullshit. Though. Oh yeah. No, I, I would exactly just say Intel, Intel is computer. the modern day IBM. Yep. Yeah. 
That's the right. way I look at it. It's That's 100% exactly right. That's exactly what happened. AMD was 100% not competition but, for over a decade. And they got so comfortable that AMD came from behind and billy clubbed them in the back of the fucking head. No, and now and they you, have to fuck it. They're not going to catch up. There was no other way for it to happen. AMD gave no signs that this was yes. coming until it dropped. Genius. That's genius. Which is beautiful. They did like, it on we, purpose. We had that yes. bullshit A12 processor. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right up until they said Ryzen 7, motherfuckers. Yeah. And then it was just like... <laughs> Drop what? the mic. Yeah. Drop the He's mic. He's like, let's Kunk. normalize eight core processors real quick. I'm like, whoa. You yep. know? And so... But that's been annoying because so up until what... Was it six months ago that Intel <clears throat> officially made Thunderbolt 3 open source? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's no longer uh, you don't have to pay to use that. And I feel like the original plan behind Thunderbolt was to be open source. But then the only ones that adopted it was the people that helped make it Apple and yeah. HP. Yeah. And so Intel was going to make their chunk of change off of that. Do yep. the lightning cable whole jumbo thing. But it's like movies and toys, baby. That I feel like, even though I'm ecstatic about that, because I mean, it's just about to like Thunderbolt 3 was the I felt like the Whoa. port revolution we needed. Yes, and um, Thunderbolt is fucking light years ahead yes. of USB. Like, 100%. it's stupid how much and different like, it is. Even though, like, I was still pissed at Apple when they were like, oh, we're just gonna make everything one port. Yeah, and so, like, I, I thought that was Kinda stupid shitty. for the time, but I understood what they were doing. I think I'm they like, were trying to push towards Bluetooth, I think they were trying to force it. Because they've well, typically they do been like to force markets. well, they've they've typically been yeah, the company the that does markets, that. Yeah. They were the first one with the CD-ROM. They were the first mouse. one without a CD-ROM. The mouse, the yeah. everything. They'll be the first one without a fucking mouse, probably too. Who knows? Yep. But like I, I understood what they were doing. I didn't see it working. To me, just because there it was, was such an insane first cost yes. to putting Thunderbolt 3 in your item. It's yes. one thing. Like, I'm pretty sure Lightning's... But they've uh, always done... The remember Lightning the FireWire cooler. craze? Dude, yeah. every Apple computer you bought had a FireWire 900. And let me tell you, when you use a FireWire 900 or 800 port versus any... Even USB Especially 3... Especially in music, yeah. using interfaces. It was... Fucking crazy. staggering, I, the I, difference. I remember... That's right, that, that interface right now is running on FireWire... Yeah, I, re and I remember I had an interface. Fast. I remember I had an interface that was USB. Yeah, uh, that was the first Minds of War EP, That's and right. then I was on a buddy's computer that had a FireWire as the uh, the Fire Pro or whatever. Yeah, Fire Pro Forty. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm using. Yeah, right he, he had one of those, and I and then I had to deal with the latency whenever we were recording. Oh, yeah. And then we no, I, and then we and then we recorded on with his. Look at this. I was like, Holy Look at those crap. lines right now as I'm fucking speaking. Blah 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 blah. It's instantaneous, yeah, man. Yeah. There's almost no latency in that. Yeah. And that's ten year old tech. Yeah. USB is garbage, and they invented this shit to be open source mm -hmm. originally, but they had to get the cost back, which yeah. is what was supposed to happen with CDs. But that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to go down to like five dollars, but now that they are going open source, when the when when Everybody when when the first version came out, they did a they did a test. They did a six terabyte dump, and it took six days for the USB version to dump it all. <laughs> it took six hours for the lightning bolt. Yeah, and now absurd. we're on version three, and USB is only on version three. Lightning bolt's only been out well, for five you know, years. USB has been around for thirty. Ass, like naming scheme because now they went from. You had USB 1, USB yes. 2, USB, USB 3, 3, and then Thunderbolt 3 was supposed to be just USB, or it was USB -C. named USB-C, yes. right? Then it became USB-C, it's just the shape of the port now, Yep. but we have a different, like Thunderbolt 3 describes the speed class, right? Can we also, then uh, we got USB can we also 3. all agree that any way in is the most magical fucking thing oh, ever? Oh, yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> when I had it on my phone... Yeah, yeah you, do, you do it one way, it doesn't yeah. work, you do it the other way, it doesn't work, you go back the first way, and it works. And yeah, you're yeah. Like, well, when I got no more of those problems. Type C on, on my Pixel, it just, life, yeah. it just opened, I'm just like, holy crap, <laughs> one less thing to worry about, one that's less insane. Thing. But you know, now cameras are getting... That's the main reason I want to upgrade my cameras, just to have USB-C on it. Hey, but, hey, tell me this. Does this ever fuck with you? You know that's an open-faced uh, board on the top of that charger? So you mm -hmm. can see the pins, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know you can lick that and it won't shock the fuck out of you? Don't ask me how I know it. I was just wondering one day, like, why, why isn't this shocking the fuck out of me? But it only works when the connection is made. A full connection. A full connection. Made. Oh, so, Clever. That's yeah, cool. so there's another design. So it's, so it's tamper proof. It is tamper proof, right? yeah. But anyway, I, I think Thunderbolt 3 
going open source, fantastic. Great yep. for the consumer. I think it was the nail in the coffin for Intel. Good. I think because legitimately, me and I know for a fact that other consumers as well, a large part of why we were sticking with Intel was Thunderbolt 3 was a part of a workflow that we wanted to integrate. I want to integrate Thunderbolt 3 for sure. Now that it's not proprietary and it's something that I'm probably going to see on pretty much every board going on, uh, going forward. I would hope so. I would hope so too. I, I, a hundred percent know AMD will take advantage. Well, I think it's a hundred percent guarantee also that this year alone, Apple has already said they're going, they're sw like the rumor mill is turning. They're going back to AMD processors. Either AMD or ARM. And I'm not mad at either. I'm consideration. not either. Yeah. Um, especially considering right now, I think it would actually be a lot more manageable for them to have an eight core CPU on their, on their MacBook pros Same. and not be overheating like hell. Yep. Um, and fucking up the battery. Yeah, and shit like yeah, that for yeah. heat damage. Now yeah. they have other shit they need to work out on a MacBook Pro, but for the moment, you talking about keyboards? Yeah, <laughs> I like I'm it. Man. Sorry, this is like I, I, I like use a MacBook Pro for work, so I'm used. I'm used. I'm to a the Windows feel. user, but I've just I found it amusing that out of all the things that they could have continued issues with, it would be the keyboard, and I was just that kind of shocked me. But I think it's a personal step forward as to getting rid of it. I think they're trying to get rid of the keyboard. Make, no, I think oh. it's a long process. See, like this one has like a tactile feel. I can yeah. feel when I'm touching it. The new ones do not. No. You you can't feel the keys. No, that's what I also hate. I think that's I what you're getting used, I used got to. to. I haven't got to try those. Yeah, the, the butterfly, butterfly keys, hinge. They're fucking terrible. I hate it. I like it. There's no key travel. There's none. <laughs> like it. Like you it's, touch it. It's, it's like a like, touch screen. It's just like a touch screen. Yeah. There's less key travel. Okay, than I'm the behind button, on that. Than pressing this on the camera. Like yeah. it's it's. So there is key travel technically. I mean, as, like, as a mechanical keyboard fan, I like. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 I love the clicky clicks. You're nope. gonna hate the clicky it. clicks. Make that. Me happy. It's gonna nope. be awful. Yep. Just letting you know. If but, you ever upgrade, you'll be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. I mean, aside from the other issues, like I remember just playing around with that keyboard. And I was just like, "This is." I could never go I'm a, Apple. Right I'm a now. fan, like, dude. Just, I'm a fan. I can't deal. I like. Well, it's like your phone. What the fuck? You don't have tactile. Touch on your phone? Yeah, but I don't use my entire two hands on you got an phone. iPad or something? No, tablets I do? Don't. I don't do that. Same thing? See, I don't do that on tablets. I I'm I, I don't like mechanical keyboards. Like I'm not really into like these super deep. Punchy travel, clicky, deep travel. Clicky. Like yeah. I don't want to hear my keyboard. The U shape. But, I'm not into the keyboard on the MacBook Pro. There's just too little key travel. Like most <laughs> Mac like most other laptops. Or just a regular wireless keyboard that you yep. can buy have the appropriate amount of key travel for the average user, and I, I think just, that's what they're trying to get away from. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm know. thinking of like the nuances of like you know how your the home track row getting bigger because your home row has the dots Which on it, so that way I still don't think that's a good idea either. But and I so think they're just going to so go to a touch surface. Even, really. So it doesn't even have dots on the home row where F and uh, no, you still have that. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's still there. Okay, no, I was going to say because that, like, look at this laptop. Like, you see how their world would yeah. lose their shit. Yes, yeah, yes. I, I literally I can't know where the type home... in the dark if I don't have that. Yeah. I well, need to know where my home lights. row is. Yeah. The keyboard lights up. You don't need it. No, I, I, mine's so always down. So here's the down. thing. Oh, you keep the lights off? Uh, on the keyboard. Uh, if, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. if I have to look at my keyboard to know where to place my, my index fingers, I'm not using the keyboard. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I will buy something else. I don't care. That's it, weird, man. I don't that's care. That's a weird, like... I am not going to look at my what's keyboard that thing? to know where to place vice? my hands. That's a weird... That's a weird... Not a vice, but a... What's no, the thing where it pisses you off? This goes back it's, to my original oh, point. Like a pet peeve. It pet is peeve, that's inconvenient. It. <laughs> Apple has been introducing things that I... At least to me, are, are inconvenient. In, more inconvenient than what I'm doing right now. And it's not something that I could see being eventually more convenient than what I'm doing right now. Now it was one when they took the headphone jack, when everybody started taking the headphone jack, while I'm still fairly pissed off of that consideration, really? now I have wireless headphones. I have wireless earbuds yeah. that last for six to eight hours. I have wireless headphones that last for thirty hours. I don't care. Bluetooth works. That's it's not point. as power hungry. Yeah. I have plenty of battery life. I don't mind plugging up at night. It's it's See, fine. It's but whatever. It's, look how long it took to get there though. Tell me the point. Tell me the point. That's what I'm saying. Of a At touch first, bar. people were like, 
Bah humbug, they got rid of the input jack. I'm a fucking idiot. But I don't understand wired headphones are pieces of shit. But and now it's fucking like every go downtown right the fuck now. Tell me how many pairs of Apple Pods you see. Fuck the AirPods. Every other motherfucker. Fuck the AirPods. You're crazy out of your mind. They're trash. No, they're not. Yes, dude. My Power, last all the day. new Power Beats Pro are much, much better. Oh, by the same company. Better. Get out of here. No, I get it. I'm saying yeah. they okay. had the chance to re-engineer more tech, and they're bigger. Buds, they're bigger, and they didn't. Yeah, they did. They used a different company that they own to do it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I'm just uh-huh. there are some people, people that do. There are what some the people fuck? that do complain about. <laughs> it's not a status symbol. They're cheaper than the Power Beats Pro. Bro, Twitter memes are powerful. Fuck and me. AirPods are a status <laughs> no, symbol right not. now. I use them every day. I drive for my job, so I'm spending six, seven hours behind a wheel of a car. They're fucking fantastic. I pull one out, the shit stops. I talk to the lady at the drive thru because that's the only fucking kind of lunch I get is a bullshit drive thru one. I hear and you. And then I put it right back in and boom, right back to work. But imagine if they just weren't a piece of hard plastic being shoved into your ear. The, yeah. What else? Ear he's, tips he's, he's, exist. No, no. He's, okay, no, I have. No, no, no. no, no, no. He's leaning on something. I, I was going to say, there's in. a lot of people that say, like, with the AirPods, at least Apple's version of the Bluetooth headset. Uh, some people have a hard time keeping the it in their plastic. ears. Yeah, They're for only my designed ears, for certain sizes. If they ears, had yes. a rubber cover just on the outside, yeah, outside just that would be enough. Other I mean, companies make those. Exactly my point. <laughs> no, just to fit on to the one that's there. I don't need them. They oh, fit in well, my ear perfect. Stupid. I'll right. go get them right now. I have them in my kitchen. I'll go get them. I'll show you. I can headbang my head and they won't come out. They fit in my ear perfect. Right. Well, you no. I, a fuck I've a you. Never, <laughs> I've never been able to deal with either version of their earphones. The circle like, ones were garbage. Ones I'll agree hurt, with that. Yes. And then the Those new ones, they also like never stayed in my ears. So <coughs> if I started sweating at all, gone, gone. See, mine don't do that. I, I don't get it. I got these little hooks in my ears. They just pop right. In. They literally pop in. Boop. Well, I have these. I have these anchor. Uh, wireless ear po- or earbuds that like basically do the same thing that Apple ear, but like I take them out of the case, they instantly connect to my phone, mm-hmm. but they have rubber ear tips. That's what you and want. they also have insane range. Like I definitely walked, I I left my phone somewhere and walked like at least fifty or sixty feet away to my car, and I was still connected and didn't realize I forgot my phone because I could still hear everything. <laughs> so I was very confused. I was like, where? It's my fault. And I'm just like, holy shit, I left it back in there. But anyway, they're incredible. Everybody go buy those. Um, but back to... Sponsor, sponsor, we're sponsor. We're supposed to talk we about like, like Intel future tech. Yeah, to, we're just fucking all over the fucking but place. But basically what I'm saying is as far as... Um, as far as the Intel versus AMD thing, what that's, AMD is king. We will. We AMD can agree is 100% killing it. That. They're yeah. going to win this battle. I feel like that's at this true. point they're taking over their consumer and their enterprise <laughs> customers. Soon Intel will be like CompUSA, and that's uh, unfortunate. A version of the past. Because at this point, Intel has gotten by on quad core processors and turbo boost. Yep, turbo boost, and, overclocking, God, the garbage, turbo boost. Yeah, and now it's just like, which mind you. All of a sudden, Intel had six and eight core processors that could go to five gigahertz just come out of what works. So I'm like, okay, so you've been sitting on this for a while and just decided you weren't going to give it. It was just going to be yeah. 10 to ten to 15% And power it came out, out at a premium, too. Same. It didn't come no, out. No, that's of true. And that's where, I mean, Intel is playing this game where, like, they're trying to maintain margin levels. They're trying to maintain profits without, like, you know, without that just like drying up or anything and at the same time they can't really undercut amd because i mean they're probably definitely going to cut into their margin but they're right. trying to make up for all the money they're losing from amd just hemorrhaging them so it's like it's this game of like they can't be cheap but they can't afford to be expensive right now right right there i think that's more of trying to take for them right now, they're just trying to grasp more of the market, take some of the market away from Intel. And I think and that's right and now I think, and I think that's the, yeah, I was going to say they're hitting right Intel now. Where yeah. It hurts, it's, it's, it's the best price. It's the best strategy. Yeah. AMD's Epic processors jumping into data centers, which that was also interesting because they released that right at the time where a lot of data centers refresh their, their systems. Yep. So then they were like, Hey, great new hardware. Costs way less than the competition, which matters as scale for sure. 
Yep. And so like that's where it hits Intel's pocketbooks um quite significantly. But yeah, I think Thunderbolt 3 like taking that proprietary away also just kind of took the last thing that a lot of us were holding on to with Intel, which for me was the big thing cuz in all my potential system builds it was like I still want an Intel processor because I still don't want to not have Thunderbolt 3 as an option. Like that gives me so many connectivity options. And especially now that I'm just wanting, I want to go laptop all the way. Like, yep, same. Um, which it's a beautiful thing that right now, like right now, if you buy a Razer Blade Advance, like 15, you can get like a six core processor, 64 gigs of RAM, like an RTX 2080 and a perfectly color accurate 4K display and the laptop is the size of your average Mac, like like just the average laptop in general, almost right, yeah. the MacBook size. That that's absurd. And like, if we're at the point where, for the vast majority of like creative freelancers, I would say you can do all of your work on something like that. That's kind of <coughs> not that desktops are going away, but it's making desktops much more of a niche necessity. Film, dude. Film and high yeah high exactly. gain audio engineering. But mind you, that's still the indie film market still doesn't even necessarily need. like I could just again, talking about like all of those advancements from right, cameras right. spitting out less processing, a uh, heavy requirement footage. Now you can also create like as an independent filmmaker, or even a low budget filmmaker, you can create like all of these things and edit them on just the laptop and, and be fine or hell a fucking Dude, iPad you can use Pro. your fucking phone yeah yeah there's like, a, there's like four the or five films that were made on an iphone absurd. only yeah they're yeah, insane the name of that movie it was I, at, it was the Sundance. director just put out a new movie actually really interesting yeah that that same director who did it the first time put out there, a new one there's a stand-up comedian who did that he went bought seven iphones Put them all around the venue, filmed it, and then took the iPhones back. Andrew Schultz, <laughs> that's him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I he talked know, about I that. Know yeah, that. no. And Andrew then just returned Schultz them, dude, and used all the footage. He's like, dude, it looks just like everybody else's. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, he literally because like he cracked the game. Like I love his story. Yeah, because he just like cracked the game on like basically he found out people weren't watching the entire one hour specials that comedians were doing, so he just started uploading his comedy in pieces to YouTube. And that's how he blew up. Yep. But literally the blew way he did up. it was he just bought a bunch of iPhones. Yep. And would just like film the segments from different angles. And then, you know, you could cut to those angles and post. Yeah. But it's just iPhone footage and it's fine. The stage it's is good lit, enough. Yeah. So it's not going to be super noisy or anything. And as far as people watching comedy are concerned, all I want to see yeah. is the person. <laughs> High def in comedy doesn't mean doesn't shit. Doesn't mean shit. Funny's funny. Yeah. If it ain't funny, I'm not watching Dave fucked. Chappelle. It could be like, damn, exactly. it could be, on a red. Like, no. it could be, it right. could be, yeah, I was going to say, it could be black and white and funny. Thank you. Yes. yes. Still funny. Dude, I watch old ass movies that are in black and white and I'm yeah. like, this is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. The medium doesn't matter. It's and just it's mainly because comedy is so audio driven. I mean, you could yeah. just listen. It's to just the audio. It's I, I do it all the time, man. So the comedy yeah. podcast world. Oh, we're getting into comedy. Jesus Christ. We were on a fucking tangent. We were at consciousness <laughs> and we got in an argument about fucking airpods so you guys think i still think 30 years dude, i don't think it's I, I honestly don't know if we'll ever see it oh i think we will see the capability i don't know just from this from the standpoint of just seems which so this far. is a whole other conversation government regulation on the tech industry i don't know how possible mm. that is yeah but only um, ours because the I, rest of the world pretty open Right, but, yeah, but downloading your content. I mean, there's a few uh, countries, but what? So you're talking about like, all right, so we've downloaded, say, my conscience. Now, what do we want to do with it? Like, put it in a robot? Well, what something? are you? Can you can just control that shit? What are what what? Is there any reason for you to have a body at all? Which has yeah. always been my question. So, like, if I take, because basically your brain is jello, fired it's a brain up with electricity. In a vat. Yes, so. If I pulled all the electricity, which contains all of you, because that's who you are, mm. and it put it into a fucking machine, does your body just drop dead, or do you continue being you, and then there's a second version of you that continues being it? 
Well, I mean, if your body is primarily maintained by the synapses, that that's the electricity. That, that Basically, is, yeah. it's is your conscious that electricity yeah. or like. But that's what we were talking about. So when I download, you do all the 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 functions that you don't think about, like breathing, heart pumping, eyelashes blinking. I, like, I don't think that they would be. Uh, I don't think that they would be together. Like well, they're f- coming from the same place, though. You think we could compartmentalize that? And well, then whenever, are you you just download, a... whenever you download the consciousness, though, that's just your consciousness at that time. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, it ca- but it comes it with it all like... the memories too. Yeah, I guess it goes back to there. what. So, I'm, my thing is, I'm yeah, just if, thinking if it's a copy, then it's one thing. Like your you were brain saying just earlier, adapts. Like if you put it in, say, a body that didn't have arms and legs or whatever, your brain's not going okay. These synapses i was firing are no longer doing anything and okay so they're not important so for a while they're just not going to function but eventually like your brain subconsciously is going to find something to do with them some other aspect to put it to use unless it doesn't need them now the other part to consider though is ideally if we're capable of transferring our consciousness we're also capable of making our consciousness aware entirely of all of its resources. So, so like, like opening the brain up so we can be super smart, like limitless. Ooh. Yeah. Essentially like that. I feel like in, in a situation where we have the technology and know, uh, know how to transfer a consciousness, we should also be able to kind of pull off the limitless type shit. In which case I think yeah. that's going to change the entire conversation of what our brain does subconsciously mm-hmm. because we'll be able to kind of rewire ourselves to appropriate action to the correct appendages if we have any. See, I see it more as like a VR style thing. How so? I feel like our brain will be the hub and we'll jack in through visuals and stimulants through the ears. Like we'll find any way into the body, like like our cell phones, our watches, our ear pods, all that bullshit. They're already, you know, we're already connected. They're, we're just wearing them right now. But I think that's more the move forward. Like, uh, did you see Ready Player One? Yeah. Where basically everyone's just in this world because the real world sucks. But yep. mm-hmm. that's kind of that's kind of more where I see it going. More than our consciousness going to the thing, we'll use ourself as the as the machine, but we'll be in. The other machine willingly. I think that VR thing is a close eventuality, but I still think kind of the you think no matter physical what, upgrade the game? is eventually like going to happen, <coughs> or at the very least going to be possible. Like it's just the march to progress. Continues. Well, I was going to come over, but I needed a firmware update. I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> can't come over. I mean, it's going to be more like I'm already there at all times. Wouldn't it come over just be instant? Wouldn't it just be an instant faction of, hmm, I think I wonder what what Corey's doing, blink. What does it mean to come over if we don't have to exist in a physical space? What if there is no over, right? See, this is why I like her. This is why you really need to watch it. Crap, Mm -hmm. I can't talk about this if you haven't watched it. (laughs) I can't talk about the scene. Hey, it's my own fault. That movie's like five years old. Spoiler alert. Yeah, go for it. So basically, towards the premise of her is just um, this guy. It's, it's in a near future setup. What? Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you. It's in a near future setup. So like, what? What's the year date? Twenty twenty two. They don't have one per se. What like would you say? Never, if we're talking about when this is possible, uh, yeah. I, I, let's just say twenty thirty. Five years and five years of AI development later. Um, okay. So I'm they, following. this company comes out with an operating system. That's just an AI that can integrate with pretty much all of your day-to-day tech. Um, so like an upgraded Siri or Google yes, assistant pretty okay. much. Okay. Um, and so he just gets the OS to try it out. Um, and it comes online, calls itself Samantha. It's like, Hey, what's up? Um, the Samantha's voiced by, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Um, yeah. So basically she like helps him out with different stuff like work and everything, but is also, you know, it's an AI learning to be learning to exist. So, you know, have conversations, all this stuff. And eventually like he ends up falling in love with her and like they have this relationship, but then they start going through the turmoils of 
what it's like to be a person in a relationship with a digital entity. Right. Um, yeah, there's she's no physical kind of, connection. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of obsessed with the idea of having a physical body. Ah, see um, there. Cause like she can't, she finds it like she really wants to physically be with him, but like he's not necessarily, it's not really about that for him. It's just like the emotional connection. Um, so there's that separation, but eventually like as she starts advancing, um, she starts meeting with other AIs and like her relationship with him becomes distant. Um, interesting. And there's this hmm. one point in the film, uh, where she's been kind of like gone for a while. Um, and he's like freaking out cause like she's been inactive. Like he can't commute, like he can't contact her or anything. And he's like, it's my fucking OS. Like, why can't I? Yeah. So he's like, where'd you go? And she's like, oh, I've just been trying to figure things out, figure things out. I've been talking with other OSs what? Um, and, and other people. And he was like, other people. And basically it clicks in his mind that she's just a digital entity. So she could be talking to other people. Um, and so he's like, are you like in a relationship with other people? And she's like, yes. And he's like, are you in love with anyone else? And she's like, yes. He's like, how many? And it's something like 600 and something thousand people. <laughs> and so he's like, and he's like freaking out. Cause he's like, no, like you're supposed to be with me. And she's like, the way she explained it, she said, um, me being like me loving other people doesn't make me love you any less. It makes me love you more. Um, it's like, uh, she kind of describes it like just an ever expanding box that, like, mm -hmm. There's no limit to the love itself. So, but in dealing with that, like she, she becomes so kind of advanced that one time becomes irreverent because like she can process things on a much, at a much faster speed. <coughs> so she ends up like eventually leaving with the other OSs to this space. That's kind of just like, it's kind of the singularity theory. Okay. Um, but they kind of go all to this place where it's kind of beyond the world as it is because they're just, the world isn't moving fast enough for them. And I think in that regard, that's what consciousness would look like for like upgrading consciousness would look like for <clears throat> humanity is just like eventually the physical world becomes a slower moving process than we can stand to be a part of. It's going to be inconvenient to physically exist. And as I said before, I believe we all march towards convenience. Wow. Yeah. I put some thought into this. I have described the singular <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but I, I just I don't yeah. Yeah, where everything think, is one and everything is whatever. I don't think bodies are the future. <laughs> yeah. Huh? What do you think, Earl? All of that. I uh, know. Yeah? Um, You're on board? No, it's just that... Um, I don't think I'd do it, man. You wouldn't well, exist no, forever? I, I don't think you'd do it. You might not do it for a while. Eventually, when want. you're the only one left. <laughs> like, there, hey, that'd be fun gonna, too. It's going to be inconvenient <clears throat> for you to be alone. There's going to be a break... There's a breaking point for everybody. And the biggest connection know, for people staying with other people... It primarily, I mean, it's human connection. You know, our stubbornness. Yeah, but a you lot don't want to die. Eventually, sure. But but, but then that's what is eventually that? going to be a switch that I flip. Not you consciously. So digital suicide of sorts. I mean, maybe. That's creepy. Now we're getting into some dark ass shit. Yeah, that's that's pretty dark. I mean, <laughs> death. I mean. We don't choose death. Like I, the human race acknowledges death. It acknowledges the inevitability. But what happens when you say now death is a choice? We're dealing with that like right forever, now, though. With people dealing with terminal illnesses, right? We're we're dealing well, that's with true. right yeah. to die. So think about that, mm. but on the scale of humanity. I don't know. I like to see things play out. So maybe you don't die. But if forever but is forever, that, that seems boring having as fuck. lived how many years? 35. All right. So let's say 135 in. Mm. Maybe life's still pretty interesting. I don't know, man. Let's say 235. Let's nah. say 1,035. My great-grandmother was 100, and she seemed pretty fucked up. I don't... 
<laughs> I don't think I want to get there. But that's there. because your mind's wasting away. Imagine being in something oh, yeah, where we your live mind in the first, doesn't waste what is it? away. What, I think we live in the first time in history that the uh, mind is outlasting the body, right? Is that the thing? Yeah. The bodies are deteriorating and faster than the mind. we're also part of the first generation that might not have to die. I'm good. I need to die. <laughs> but I'm not just right saying, now. I'm not, I didn't mean that I'm in like a fucked every, up way. I'm like, sure <laughs> there's a possibility you, that people will want to die, but our... It also describes, so think about, and this is getting kind of philosophical. Is that, is that, a is that thunder? I think that's thunder. It's sunny out. For what do you now? think, I Earl? I didn't think it was going to rain today. Earl, that's why I, I want to hear your thoughts. Oh, well, I do have a couple questions about that. Okay, so in this scenario, um, are you the owner of your consciousness still, or is somebody like an administrator of some sort keeping an eye on? Yeah, that? see, that's a good question. And then on top of that, also then think about the capabilities of that because I mean, somebody could send a, a malware bot or something out out through and just annihilate a lot of people that people don't get the chance to flip the switch. So also, what happens like when all the flip switch flippers are gone? Like, who the fuck is making sure the power stays on? This is why I'm a little more adamant on the simulation thing. And let, let me explain why. Yeah. So. So it's really not forever. So let's say. so Unless the robots take over and it's the only place we can go. And then they keep us alive as an experiment. But then we think we're still in a simulation. We're in a simulation, Eric. That's not quite the route of why, but I'm going. But I mean, sure. <laughs> If it gets us to the, the same previous. End. No, so my thinking is... I'm a huge fan of The Matrix and The Truman Show. All right, yeah. It's all I, one, I, I it's all it. one and the same, and Terminator. So the Terminator yeah. is a robot uprising. Yeah. The Matrix is us figuring out they uprised and killed us, and then The Truman Show is our forever. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I also have a theory... That's that actually that, terrifying. <laughs> no, I, I have a theory that no one escaped The Matrix, but that's, that's a whole other thing. But, um... So my thinking behind this is like, okay, so we're creating this space, right? Where our consciousness get to exist collectively and move a little faster than the physical world moves, right? Ideally, though, as we continue to evolve, we can each have our own spaces to maintain, right? We, can, we, can, we don't necessarily have to depend on some higher thinking admin okay. like person to build this space for us because... We should be able to elevate our own intelligence individually as time goes on to be able to make our own spaces. There shouldn't be this idea. Are you talking that about digitally? I'm like, saying that someone being smarter than someone else probably won't be a thing. Not, not in mm. a significant way. Not in a way that we have to depend on someone to create this space we can exist in. Mm. I'm saying eventually it will get to a point where us having our own spaces is practically a given. And then... What happens when you have your own space? What if it feels too small? I mean, we're an infinite intelligence at this point. We're yeah. fastly approaching. So then we need to grow that space, right? Maybe to the size of a universe. And then what happens when we get bored in that universe? But we want to populate it with some stuff. You see where I'm getting? Yeah, we're living in a simulation. We're living in a simulation. Yeah, I'm guys. telling you, man. <laughs> this is all fake. <laughs> I'm saying but we also know that the universe correct. is expanding. I don't well, see the true, universe. But, I don't see the universe really ending. But isn't the universe heating up? Did you read that? So there's also the theory that the hold universe on, expands on. and contracts. Yeah, exactly. Like, hold this on. isn't the first universe. I right. definitely agree with that. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a multiverse. I think personally. Well, speaking. no, I mean like the same universe contracting and expanding again, or like it contracts like a black hole. So you're saying it's an infinite cycle. Like, yeah, like this cycle of expanding, contracting. I don't know all the stuff in between that, so don't kill me if I'm wrong. Or oh, just like, no, it's just but, that from what we know right now, the universe is expanding. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple ideas. I, I'm not a physicist or a cosmologist, but I have a couple ideas about what could cause it to come back in. Because, I mean, there are black holes that suck in light and stuff like that. And just remember that our universe has the actual energy, I believe, if I can remember right up. I'm, I hope I'm right. Uh, the actual energy is equal to zero when it comes to matter and antimatter yes. and stuff like that. Well, it's, a, it's no. actually. Well, so yes and no. So I remember um, I spoke to a guy who was involved when they first discovered uh, the Higgs boson, mm -hmm. like when that happened. And he was talking about how 
There's trouble with the theory that the universe contracts and expands because ideally there's supposed to be at the at the beginning of the universe there's supposed to be an equal mat uh, equal amount of antimatter and matter and that ideally it would cancel each other out entirely which means nothing can be formed because they cancel each other out so the fact that a universe is formed means there was a disproportionate amount of matter and antimatter at like together um so that suggests there's more matter than antimatter but I, it gets a little fuzzy after that because it's been a while but i think like the higgs boson being able to essentially create matter like changes that distribution so that like when the contraction happens again you can still have matter again like it's it's essentially something to stop that equation from being equal or mm -hmm. like changing the the proportion as time goes on um, I did inquire with him as to whether that meant an antimatter universe existed, and he couldn't really dive into that with like a lot of clarity. Yeah, I'm not say. sure about was, multiverses, real, alternate. Real weird. Yeah, I don't know about multiverses or parallel universes or anything like that. I'm for it. I mean, I get, I get, I get the idea of a parallel universe of like, you know, um, I. I'm driving. I'm hungry. I can either go to McDonald's or yeah, and I can somewhere go to else. Sonic. Somebody made the song. And then, so and then the yeah, machine. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I get how that would kind of make sense, but I mean, like I said, back to the simulation theory. <coughs> the reality that I'm in is my is the reality, and whether it's a simulation or not, it really means nothing. It doesn't really matter in the end game. At it all. doesn't matter at all. Yeah. No. I, I take a lot of comfort in the fact that there's some universe where I am Superman. I mean, shoot. <laughs> it's just... yeah, man, and I'm Wolverine. Somewhere and somewhere Earl, I'm Spider Man. Man, Earl is clearly Spider Man <laughs> <laughs> with a beard. Yeah, Spider Man with a beard. Yes, I'm the much older Peter <laughs> much Parker, older, Strasner. wiser <laughs> Strasner. <laughs> <laughs> Parker's my middle name. Anything you want to add to this, Earl? We've been talking for fucking ever. Uh, nah, I knew uh, this was going to go long. I knew oh, it. It, it always does. Honestly, I could still keep going. About no, I know, I know. Random things. Uh, I no, like I, don't, was one I don't really have anything else. I did want to hit on quickly. Because we've hit processor development, consciousness. Mm -hmm. We hit debates on what wireless headphone is still good and headphone <laughs> jacks are dumb. Uh, fuck Java. Fuck Java. Fuck oh, Java. we did yeah. fuck Java. We come to that conclusion. <laughs> yeah, we said fuck Java, which I, really I, I don't know much Swift. about it. No, like especially after this newest development. That Swift and Metal? It looks like it'd be fun to learn. Yeah, I've been playing around with Swift a little bit. It's pretty fun. I like it. Some real-time visuals, mm -hmm. which I think is insane. Do I still have to have a MacBook, or is there some, like, PC hack? equivalent? Yeah, is there some hack on a Ooh. PC that I can use? I would assume that. I don't that. think... I, the last time I looked several years ago, there wasn't anything to let me code on Swift on a PC, but... I don't think. But your uh, roommate has one, so... Yeah. And it actually only takes up like a small amount of space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Xcode just needs a version for That's Windows. It. Yeah. But, but whatever. I think if they want to really expand, they're going to have to do that. Yeah. Because Plus, I'm tired I mean, of this. they already could because Windows came out. Uh, you know, they can. Uh, the terminal in Windows now actually has Bash in it now. Yeah. Dude, so you could. So you, you could do that. Did you see that promo video on YouTube for the new terminal? Because I'm sorry, but that shit got me so excited. And for I, Windows? That was probably my nerdiest moment for in For Windows? Years. Yes. They showed, like, how the, like, the new terminal... It, it was mainly a cosmetic update, but I, like, watched that video, and I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. It's beautiful, even though I'm not going to use terminal for <laughs> shit. And yeah. But like, it was just like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, I have my terminal modded out on my on my Mac. Oh. I use, like, T-Mux and Dude, stuff like his that. his shit is insane. You go to his house, it looks like a fucking spaceship in his office. <laughs> I thought I was being fancy when I downloaded Eclipse. I was <laughs> like... Nah, Earl's on another level with that code and shit. I was out here like Notepad plus plus motherfuckers. I'm better yeah. than you. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people. It's funny. A lot of people like using GUIs and uh, stuff like that. And I like using you know Tmux and just mm -hmm. things in the terminal. Like you can look up an image of Tmux T M U X, and it's all in your terminal, your file explorer, your files, like your file that you have up. Um, you have your From GitHub. Yeah, there you go. 
Uh, there should be some images too that you can see better what it looks like on a on a screen. But oh, okay. anyway, yeah, I would most definitely. Tmux is awesome because you can have sessions too, so I can have a session for one project. Which one, Earl? Or sure. another one, like uh, this guy here. This guy here. Uh, Does any of this look familiar, you glasses yes. wearer? Oh, <laughs> why didn't you fucking tell me? Well, I didn't know. I forgot you hook up. To yeah, man. Fuck. Have the TV on. My bad, guys. I've been sitting over here Googling shit. Come on, you fuck. <laughs> Is it on the right thing? It doesn't fucking matter. Okay. But yeah, here, show it's, me. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like that. You can, this one here? You can separate in your windows and you can have all sorts of stuff going at one time. Yeah, oh, there's nice. four terminals on here. Yeah, I like all in one. And, okay. then one. and then you have one where you're doing your commands. One, which is like a file explorer where you can, you know, pull up a file, another uh, piece of your code. It's 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 pretty awesome. After I learned how to use it, I was using, you know, Ruby mine because I'm a I do Ruby development and PHP, PHP storm and stuff like that. Jesus. Um, how many languages do you speak, Earl? Uh, Ruby, Python, the C's. C, C++, C Sharp, uh, Python. I need to get more refreshed on Python because I hardly ever use it anymore, and I should use it a lot more on my back-end server stuff. Uh -oh.